This is Brutal Battle Beer Break, and for the first time for this, we will be trying something from Springhouse Brewing. Springhouse Brewing is out of Conestoga, Pennsylvania, which is close to Lancaster, for anyone who's familiar with that geography. Um, Springhouse, I don't think I've had anything by them that I've disliked. Uh, everything's ranged from solid uh, to really good. So, very excited about this one. This one is called Simcoe Must Be Destroyed. It is a double IPA, and it, it does not have any sort of uh, ABV or anything on it. So, I like the label. I think they do pretty fun cartoonish labels, typically. You can see Mr. Simcoe Hop breathing fire and destroying cities. What else would Simcoe Hops do? Um, Imperial IPA, obviously, one of my favorite styles, so I'm very excited to get into this one. Hmm. Labels are cool, but at the end of the day, what's your beer like? You know what I mean? So let's see. Very well filtered. Tons of big bubbles in that. Nice, pretty present head to it. Very orangey in color. Okay. It's got a very fresh citrus smell to it kind of jumps up your nose with a little grapefruitiness. There's a little bit of like a bubblegum aspect. Also, a little bit of a caramelly note from the malts as well, but very citrusy, grapefruit, some orange, a little bubblegum like I was saying. It smells really good. It smells very, very strong, like it's going to actually be very present in the mouth feel and a little bit viscous it's like very meaty in the nose but it doesn't smell like actual meat obviously meaty citrus you could say okay um i'm getting a little bit of a spice type characteristic to it you know some people say sometimes from Hoppy beers, they get a little bit of like an oniony aspect, like chive type thing. I get a little bit of that, and just kind of a little bit of like a earthy um, hop presence, spicy hop presence. Um, I do get the citrus as well. It's, it's definitely tasting, the mouthfeel is more present like I thought it was going to, and the taste is very deep as well in that sense. It's it's very much like biting into some citrus, like grapefruit, but not a whole lot of tartar sweetness to it. Just a little bit of the flavor and you're getting a lot of rind. So there's a decent amount of bitterness on it. I'm wondering what the ABV is on this. Because I'm going to guess it's somewhere in the eight and a half range, somewhere in there. Um, pretty bitter on the end, and the bitterness is continuing to build. Not my favorite of their offerings uh, by any means, but it is good, and I will certainly continue to drink this. It's going down actually a lot easier than you would expect an Imperial IPA to do, um, even though it is pretty, pretty substantial in the mouthfeel. So that's a plus for it, uh, making it pretty sessionable as far as an uh, Imperial IPA goes. I was looking for a little more of that citrusy note I was getting in the nose, maybe more of kind of like the caramelly aspect from that backup scent from the malts. Um, getting mm, the slightest bit of both of those things, but not as much as I was getting in the nose and I wanted more of. Solid beer though, decent beer. Um, I'm going to drink this bottle, no problem. So... Uh, if you like what you heard, you can go out and try and get Springhouse, although you probably have to be in Pennsylvania or be in a neighboring state where you can you know, travel into Pennsylvania with no problem because I know their distribution is not all that far at the moment. But anyway, thank you very much, Springhouse, for making nice beers, and thank you, everyone, for checking this episode out. Stay tuned for the next one, and until then, go get yourself an awesome beer to try.